So good morning. And so I want to say welcome also to the people who are online this morning. Um, we are allowing people to come onto the Zoom account and watch from Zoom. So I just want to say welcome. So um, I want to ask a question. Here's my question. When you woke up this morning and you went into the bathroom and you caught a glimpse of yourself in the mirror, what'd you say? Did you say, good morning, you glorious expression of God. You are the love, the light of the world, expressing peace. You know, or did you say, oh my gosh, it's my mother. <laughs> or, oh my gosh, that's my father. We say things to ourselves all the time, all the time. We're constantly, that mind is constantly saying something to us. And what, what are we saying? You know, and, and it's kind of a good practice to go, so what did you say? Could you repeat that? You know, just like we would if somebody said something and we didn't quite catch what they said. Oh, excuse me, what did you say? So that we can really hear what it is that is being said to us, about us, in our own minds. Because it is only through awareness that we have the opportunity to change. It's the only way that we can change is when we become aware of what it is that we're doing, what it is that we're saying. You ever have that moment where you say something and you go, where did that come from? Guess where it came from? Oops, our own mind. Now, sometimes we say, where did that come from? And it was like this really good thing. And it was like, wow, I didn't even know I knew that. <laughs> you know, we have that experience too. Whoa, that was, that was pretty good. But being aware of what we say is the key to transforming our lives. Charles Fillmore said that the power that we have is the power to change our mind. And it is through the power of changing our mind that we change our lives. We change our experience. So the subtitle for this talk today is really about affirmation, compassion, and forgiveness. Three pretty large topics for one short little talk. Um, but they're topics that go along together because we cannot really truly affirm the truth without having forgiveness and self-compassion. How would our lives change if in the morning we woke up and we looked in the mirror and after we had that first thought, whatever that first thought is, that we consciously changed our mind and said something different? That we had compassion for ourselves in that moment and accepted ourselves exactly as we are? Because that's really what compassion is. Compassion is accepting ourselves exactly as we are, or accepting someone else exactly as they are. It doesn't mean that we condone bad behavior, but it does mean that we come to it with an understanding of the pain that, that we are in or that someone else is in. When was the last time that we sat down and, and said to ourselves, wow, I recognize that you're really hurting today. And out of that pain, you're saying some really negative things to yourself. I want to give you some love right now. I just want to give some love. 
And I'm going to forgive myself for thinking those thoughts about myself. I want to let go. And I want to, I want to hold an intention to see myself with new eyes so that I can experience the world and I can see others with those new eyes too. One of the ways that we do this is through the power of affirmative prayer. Now, Unity has a five-step prayer process. And it is, I'm going to say, it's Unity's prayer process. It is not divine science. It is not science of mind. It's not Catholic, Presbyterian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist. It's a Unity five-step prayer process. Now, it is not the only prayer process. And you may notice within this prayer process, you may notice some different traditions showing up and going, oh, well, I, I can see some of this and I can see some of that. I'm not even saying that it's the best prayer process. It is a prayer process. And it is a prayer process that when we're in that place where we've begun to hear what's going on in our mind, it can be a, an easy way to shift. An easy way for us to shift that energy and, 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 and to get some different energy going in our mind and in our bodies. And so I'm actually going to invite us to go through this prayer process as I talk about it, because what better way to talk about a prayer process than to experience it? It's one thing to talk about it, but if you don't experience it, then it's all just words. So I'm going to begin with a quote from Eric Butterworth. Prayer is not something that we do to God, but to ourselves. It is not a position, but a disposition. It is not flattery, but a sense of oneness. It is not asking, but knowing. It is not words, but feeling. It is not will, but willingness. So I'm going to invite you to just close your eyes for a moment, if you'd like to do so. And take these words into your heart. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall any word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So the first step is open. It is about relaxing. And you will often, you will often hear us when we open in a prayer to say, relax and breathe. We breathe in the divine presence. And we allow that presence to breathe us.
We become aware of how our body feels. We can feel our feet on the floor or we can feel our, our bum in the chair, our back up against the back of the chair. We may begin to feel places in our body that are tight and we can breathe into that space. And let it go. It is in this open space that we set an intention for our time. Is there something that is in our mind or our heart? Is there a challenge that we're facing? Or is it just that we want a deeper connection? with the divine presence. So we hold that intention in our mind. As we move into a place of recognizing that God is, We concentrate. We concentrate on the presence as it is showing up for us in this moment. Do we feel a deeper sense of peace? Do we feel loved? Is there a calming balm that seems to just flow through the body and the mind? We concentrate on the truth that God is, I am. God is, I am. In this concentration, we feel, we feel these words deeply. We feel this presence. And then we go into meditation, into that place in the silence. It's just a natural flow from concentrating to just allowing what we are concentrating on to flow away. And we go into that sacred place, the Holy of Holies, and we rest. And as the mind wanders, and it will, we just bring our awareness back to the presence. (coughs) 
allowing God to be God in us. And out of this meditation, we come into a place of realization. I can, I have, I know. It is a present moment realization. I have all that I need. I can take that next step, that step that maybe I've been afraid to take. I know that God is with me as I take that step. I know the presence of God as love, as harmony, I know that in this very moment, God is balancing and harmonizing my mind, my heart, my body, my affairs. All is unfolding in divine order. And from this place, we step into a place of gratitude. And this place of gratitude is not the perfunctory, thank you, God. It is allowing that appreciation, that, that gratitude to well up within us because we know that what we have prayed for, we have received. And we are grateful. We know that the presence of God is active in our lives in this very moment. And we are grateful. We know that every need is fulfilled. We are guided. to our greatest good, and we are grateful. Harmony and balance reign in our lives, and we are grateful. And we allow this, this energy of gratitude, this energy of deep abiding appreciation to rise up within us. And we send that gratitude out into the world. We take a moment and we, we share this energy And we share it with the world. And it truly is in this place of gratitude that we are able to say, and so it is. So it is now, and so it shall ever be. Amen. Now, you may have noticed that this prayer process resembles meditation a lot. I mean, even one aspect of the prayer process is meditation. So in unity, we often say that we practice prayer and meditation. 
we don't just, you know, it's not like we practice prayer. No, I'm going to meditate. It's like it's 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 one, it's combined because they are both that energy of connecting with the divine within us. And as we connect with that energy of the divine within us, it transforms our thinking. We begin to see the world in new ways. We begin to see others in new ways. Ideas begin to pop up. Earlier today, we were talking about synchronicity. Synchronicities begin to appear. You'll be thinking about something and it'll show up. My favorite is always, I'll be thinking, I really need to call so-and-so. Yeah, I'll do that later. And the phone will ring. Well, I guess I won't do that later. <laughs> because that person will be on the phone. We open ourselves up to this flow and this energy of life where we are aware and awake. We are aware and awake to what is in this moment. It's not about changing what is, it's about changing us to respond to what is, which then can have an effect on what is. So it's not about going, oh, please, God, please, God, please, God, please, God, change this because it's making me uncomfortable. You know, and, and, and so since I'm uncomfortable, it's God's job to make me comfortable. In the ministerial program, we, we have a, a saying that um, I am in a place of divine discomfort. Because sometimes when things are revealed to us, some of those thoughts that are revealed to us in our mind, we go into a place of divine discomfort. Ooh, I had no idea I was thinking that. I had no idea that was in there. I thought I was just going along doing really well. And then we realize that, that there's an area that needs healing. So one of my favorite prayers that I have taught a lot is the grace prayer. And the grace prayer was created by um, a unity minister, an instructor at unity school. She was the prayer instructor. And it's based on the last seven words of Jesus. And it begins with, for thee, I thirst. For thee, I thirst. Into thy hands, I commit my spirit. My soul, my body, this challenge, whatever's going on, I surrender it. Thy will is my will. Thy will be done through me. Reveal that which is to be revealed and heal that which is to be healed. That I may glorify you, God. So my favorite part of this prayer is the reveal that which needs to be revealed and the heal that which needs to be healed. Now, we've talked about, you know, what are those thoughts? Yeah, what did you say? What are those thoughts? But there's another side to the same coin. And I would be amiss not to speak about the other side of the same coin because I believe it's the side of the coin that we're the most afraid of. And that's why we don't allow ourselves to go there. What if what God wants to reveal to us, that spirit within us wants to reveal to us is our glory? What would you do if you woke up in the morning and the first thought that you thought when you looked in the mirror was, 
you are the glory of God. You are the glory of God. God is expressing through you and as you, and you are the glory of God. You are the beauty of God. And you express the truth of God. Would it be okay with us? Or does your stomach kind of do this little thing of uh, kind of turning a little bit going, oh, that might be crossing the line. Because the truth is, for years, first of all, I'll say for years, I spent for years, I spent saying, Reveal that which needs to be revealed and heal that which needs to be healed because I wanted all of the stuff to go bye-bye. I want to be on the fast track. I'm on the fast track to enlightenment. Thank you very much. So let's just reveal all that dirty stuff, stir it up, get it out of there. Let's heal it and move on so I can be. And then one day when I was in prayer, that sentence came to me, but what came after it was, I want to reveal your glory. And I was stunned. Whoa, wait a minute. Let me look at those words again. Reveal that which is to be revealed. It does not say... Reveal all my garbage. It says, reveal that which is to be revealed. And what may need to be healed is my ability to accept my glory. And what might it look like? What might our lives look like if we knew deep down inside that we are the glory of God expressing in human form. What might our lives look like? If we were able to release and let go of, of that negative view, to have compassion and allow forgiveness, we don't do the forgiving, we allow forgiveness. One of the things that Jesus taught is the disciples say to him, and, and one of the disciples comes up to him and says, so, how, many, how many times do I have to forgive my brother? Like seven? You know, that's a number of completion. So seven's good. I can keep track seven times, and then touch off. I'm done. And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven, which is actually the number four infinity, because that's how many times we are forgiven. God never, ever says, I'm sorry, you have just done that too many times. And you keep saying you're not going to do it anymore, but you keep doing it. So I'm not going to forgive that anymore. That one's, that one's on the bad list. And it's going to stay there. No. God is always forgiving. It is we who have to allow that forgiveness to come in. We have to allow ourselves to experience the forgiveness. And in that, forgive ourselves. The only forgiveness there is to give is to ourselves. So I'm going to close with another quote from Eric Butterworth. He says, 
Prayer is our conscious connection to the divine within us and all around us. The universe in the universe is calling, he says, God doesn't have substance. God is substance. God doesn't have life. God is life. The need is not to pray for things, but to become a channel for the release of that cosmic energy that take form as the things. Claim your good and be a positive channel for its release. <laughs>